circumstance he's a god of your situation he crushed the devil underfoot his power his glory is here this morning to fill you with his presence fill you with his love give you overcoming victory right in the midst of your circumstance lift up your hands this morning and shout for the king is coming oh the king is here oh hallelujah let the earth give him worship this morning let everything that had breath praise our God this morning. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. Let's exalt him this morning and praise his holy name. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So God, which you bless you this morning and welcome. Amen. To our Sunday morning service. And if you have your Bibles, we'd like to turn to a portion of the psalm familiar psalm this morning psalm 100 amen praise god amen psalm chapter 100 from verse 1 it says make a joyful noise unto the lord all ye lands serve the lord with gladness Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. May God add blessing to the reading of his word this morning. Let's bow our heads as we pray and want to ask God's leadership this morning over the service. Amen. That he would come and minister to our hearts as we wait on him. Lift your hands now as we worship and just...
enter into prayer. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord Father. For you are the creator, Lord, of all things that we see with our eyes, O oh God. There's nothing that you don't know about this morning. There's not a soul that you are not watching over this morning. Father, your love has stretched around the world, O oh God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. You found us, Lord. In the midst of our despair, you found us. In the midst of our darkness, you reached your hand through the curtain. You pulled us through a mighty long way. Oh God, we stand here not by any power of our own, not by any education, but by the grace of Almighty God. All souls are in your hands this morning. And there's nothing we can do without you, Father. So Lord, we come into this house to surrender to you, Lord. To give back to you, Father, what you've given to us, life, Lord, Father. We give our lives to you now, Father. We pray that you come and have your own way, Lord Jesus. Come and fill us and move, O oh God, in a mighty way, Father. Come and speak to our hearts, Lord Father, and minister to those who are needy this morning. Lord, our hearts are under expectation, Father. For what you're about to do, Lord God, Lord, we just lend ourselves now fully to you now. That you would use us, Lord. Use your ministry, Father. Use your servant, O oh God, to speak your word to us, Lord. We know that your spirit is, is commissioned to follow that word, to bring it to life. May you bring it to life this morning in our presence, in your presence, Father. Have your way today, Lord Father. Lord, may you take complete control. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask these things. Amen and amen. Why don't you just lift your hand now and just worship him all over. Just begin to praise him. Just begin to thank him. Oh, hallelujah. Just lift your hand and just worship him. Father, we praise you, Lord. We glorify you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence. Who we are standing on holy ground. Oh, and I know, oh, and I know that there, there are. and sing oh we are standing on holy ground and I know oh and I know I know that there are angels all around all around oh in your own way right now. Hallelujah. Mm, oh, we are standing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father. 
Thank you for your anointing, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the strength you give. Oh, thank you for the life you give. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, I know. Oh, there are angels this morning. There are angels this morning. They come to minister. Angels with coals of fire. Angels. Oh, with flaming sword. Angel. Oh, hallelujah. The angel of the Lord. And camp it round about them that fear him and deliver at them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him this morning. We don't put our trust in princes. We don't put our trust in horsemen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee will not slumber. The Lord which keepeth thee will not sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. He is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Oh, somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let us praise him. sister this morning we walk in the light walking in the light of God amen amen hallelujah amen let's give God praise this morning we walk oh in the light we walk oh in the light we walk in the light walking in the light of God oh we walk oh Walk, oh, we walk, oh, in the light, walking in the light of God. Oh, we walk, oh, in the light, we walk, oh, in the light, we walk, oh, in the light, walking in the light. Let's sing it up. We walk, oh, in the light, we walk. Fire in your bones, fire in your soul, fire in your body, fire. 
fire in your spirit. May he heal you this morning. Give the Lord a shout of praise right now. Oh, glory. offering this morning, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's sing that song. When we praise, when we praise, there should be a fire in our hearts. There ought to be a joy upon our lips to come into the house of God. God give us life in our limbs to praise him. The devil is a liar this morning. How many believe that this morning? Say amen. Oh, hallelujah. How many know you're created to worship God this morning? How many know he created your hands to worship him? Your feet to worship him? Your mouth to sing his praises? Not to spread negativity, but to tell of how good he is. How much he's done for me. I may not have it all, but I've got Jesus. And if I've got Jesus, then I've got it all. Oh, hallelujah, glory. Amen, amen. So let's bow our hands as we bring the times you're offering before the Lord. Almighty God, we are grateful this morning for your loving kindness and your tender mercies father lord now as we uh pass the tithes your offering bucket around we pray that your blessed people father as they give may you provide for them father may you open your doors of blessings to them bless those that may not have it this time lord father may you also bless them also father bless the ministry they go on as you continue to labor in love amen in jesus name we pray and ask you amen when we pray, oh, when we praise, when we pray, there should be a fire in the heart, hands of praise, when we pray, consuming every part, because we know that the
should be a boy you wear. Oh, all hands are raised when we praise. Oh, consuming every part because we know that the God we serve will make His presence known when we praise. When we pray. Oh, one more time. worship him right now. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Let's lift your hands right now all over this place and just close your eyes and just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank him for everything. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you for your power. Thank you for your presence. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for what he's about to do. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let your faith reach out. Oh, let your faith begin to thank him for the things he has not yet done. But by faith, he will do it this morning. By faith, he's going to fill you. By faith, he's going to heal you. Thank God for your healing. Thank him for the Holy Ghost in advance. Thank him in advance this morning. Oh, Hallelujah. I know you're gonna do it. I put my trust in you this morning and I thank you. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, yes, that's it. Just worship him now. Just praise him now with all your heart, oh, with all your soul. Oh, welcome him with your praises, with your worship this morning. Oh, hallelujah, tell him all he is. He is a God that oh, does miracles. He's still a miracle working God this morning. He can work a miracle for you this morning. Just trust and believe in the God that moves mountains, in the God of Israel, in the God of Moses, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Joshua. That same God is here this morning. That God is here to rout the enemy. That God is here to give you victory. That God is here to slay that giant in your life. 
life. Yes, yes, he's the God of David. He's the God that gives victory in the battle. Oh, stand still and see the salvation of your God. Our oh, God shall help us and that right early. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, God. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good to be. God is so good. Yes, God. Oh, it's so good. Oh, hallelujah, God. towards us your tender mercies towards us our new every morning we open our eyes we see the grace of God when we put on our clothes we see the grace of God you're the food we eat you're the air we breathe you're the reason we sing this morning Oh, not a word in my mouth, but Lord, thou alone knowest. Oh, hallelujah. You're acquainted with all my ways and with all my griefs. Oh, he bore sorrows on the cross. You praise him this morning. 
there is something to praise God for this morning he brought you through things that you don't even know about this morning you owe him your praise you owe him your worship you owe him your life you owe him your joy you owe him everything this morning it's a grace of God to walk into this building oh hallelujah the devil is a liar the devil was defeated when you walked into this sanctuary this morning it took a faith that God put in your soul oh to stand the test to stand the trial oh hallelujah hallelujah oh do you believe it this morning oh hallelujah hallelujah why don't you turn around and encourage somebody turn around shake a hand somewhere praise God amen oh hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus glory to God amen God can do it again and again and again well there's no reason to doubt that God can do it again well yesterday and the day before and he is always the same and there's no reason to doubt that God so much brother Anthony thank you musicians can the people of the Lord say amen are you happy to be in the presence of the Lord the children of the Lord have a right to shout and sing it's a right it's a right to shout it's a right to sing it's a right to worship and the devil does not have that right he can't touch that right it's your right you have a right to worship you have a right to tell the devil no you have a right to claim your promise. You have a right to healing. You have a right to revival. You have a right to victory. You have a right to overcome. You have a right to say hallelujah anyhow. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So it's certainly good to be in the house of the Lord. Let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our oh, gracious heavenly Father, we thank you this morning to be in your presence. To be in your house, your house of worship, your house of correction, your house of training, your house of healing, your house of your bread, your house of Lord shelter and comfort and safety and peace in the midst of the storm. We thank you, Father, for your blood, for your mercy, for your grace. 
Lord, for your loving kindness, Father, for great is thy faithfulness, Lord. We thank you that you are faithful. You have been faithful and you promise to continue to be faithful. Great, Lord, is thy faithfulness, Lord. Lord, when we have failed, you have never failed. When we have given up, you have never given up. When we have always fallen down, Lord, you are there to help us get back up. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the great message, Lord, of the hour that you sent through your prophet that we could have clarity in this season, Lord, to rightly divide the word and to see plainly before us the promised land of the Holy Ghost and adoption and perfection that we could realize that time is short and we are leaving this place help us dear God to take our ranks help us to take our places help us to become strong and courageous as you challenge Joshua to be strong and courageous be very strong and very courageous if there ever was a time for us to be strong and courageous it's now if there ever was a time for us to square our shoulders and draw our swords and take up our positions it's now so father may you speak to your people may you bless your church may you bless the labors the effort the sacrifice the commitment the dedication the zeal the labor lord the love the sighing and the crying lord it is not in vain lord we thank you that you have placed a burden in our hearts for such a time as this. Lord, we pray a special blessing this morning on our pastor in a special way that he would touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, his wife, Lord, and Lord, the ministry, the elders, the deacons, the trustees, the ushers, the musicians, the technicians, the helps in the governments, those that are here, those that are connected on the internet, Lord, even those that are already on their way and traveling and preparing to travel, Lord, for the convention this week, Lord, Lord, may you bless the convention, Lord, may this island shake as never before, Lord, not under the power of man, but under the power of the Holy Ghost under the power of the resurrected Christ Lord the same way the grave couldn't hold Jesus and that stone had to be rolled away and the ground shook father Lord may there be a great shaking Lord may this island never be the same may the bride be set free may the cripples walk may the dumb talk may backsliders be delivered Lord may healing and revival and the Holy Ghost and restoration and redemption pour out over this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord as we approach your sacred scriptures may you walk out the pages of the Bible may you speak to our hearts may you take me out of the way may you use me just as a microphone that you could speak directly to your sons and your daughters to hear only what you need them to hear Lord we give this service over to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the church says Amen, amen and Amen I'd like to welcome one and all this morning in the precious name of Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles, I'd like to turn to just one portion of Scripture, reading from the book of Joshua, reading Joshua, reading chapter 24, and reading verses 15 and 16. Reading Joshua 24, reading verse 15, reading verse 14 rather. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. As we all know, we are in convention week and on the great expectation for God to do something really powerful in our midst. And we are taught through scripture and reinforced by the prophet that you get what you expect. You have a little expectation, you get a little blessing. 
but you have a great expectation, you get a great blessing. You have a great expectation, you get a great reward. You dig a valley and there's just one ditch. That's how much water you could hold, but you dig a valley full of ditches. Then you could leave with everything that you came to receive. And that's not just the convention, but that's every service. That's everything that you do in life. It is in alignment with your expectation, with your hope, with your level of focus and your attitude is what brings the results. Can the church say amen? So for a title this morning, just to share something with the church before the convention, and my burden here is to help you along the way, uh, knowing that God is going to bless his people over this weekend. And I know in my heart that Brother Branham taught us you have to do something for something to happen. So we could only do all the best that we could do, and then we depend on God to do the rest. We could do all the effort, all the sacrifice, the praying, the contribution, the fixing up and all these things. And it's just up to God to do the rest. It's not that we're sitting on doing nothing, hoping for something to happen. But we are doing everything we can do, looking for God to do the rest and to use his servants. That will be ministering to us in a mighty way, both who will be greeting and ministering both local and abroad. So for a title this morning, choose you this day whom you will serve. And a subject, put away the strange gods. And an inspiration, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I actually preached this message when I was in Ghana last month, and I felt led to bring it back to the church uh, directly. Now, we read from the book of Joshua, and we know Joshua is a parallel to the book of Ephesians. It's a book of possession. It's a book of inheritance. And we know that this theme of this convention is contending for the faith. So it's about fighting for the faith, fighting for your promise, fighting for your inheritance. And Brother Branham, just to lay a foundation, and I'm not going to be too long with you because we have a number of things to do after service, but ride with me for the time that we have together. Are you with me this morning? From the message, question and answers, Brother Branham said, the promised land is to live in this land of Holy Spirit. That's what this is all about, is to live in the land of the Holy Spirit. That's God's promise for the church, is to live in the power of the Spirit. It's another world. So we're not just here to have church, but we want to enter into another world. Hallelujah. That's what I'm looking for this weekend in the convention, to be in another world. I want to be transported to another place. I want to be caught up in higher places. I don't want to be in the humanistic realm. I don't want to be coming looking for flesh. I don't want to be bringing my problems and my struggles. And No, 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 no. Take me higher. Come and go higher with me. Come and fly where the eagles fly. Fly above your bills. Fly above your challenges. Fly into the land of the Holy Ghost. The presence of the angel of the Lord where all things are possible to them that believe. Can the church say amen? It's another world. It's another land. But the man said here, you have to come out of the condition that you've been in to come out to live in this promised land. So you have to come out of what you're in. Come out of the backbiting. Come out of the, all the carnality. Come out of the up and the down. And come out of the, the yo-yo lifestyle. One day you're up, one day you're down. You don't know where you're standing because you are called to live in this land called Holy Spirit. It's a good land. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a land full of blessing. In that land has access to your children. In that land has access to your healing. In that land has access to your deliverance. In that land has access to adoption. In that land has access to the seven thunder manifestation. Wait till those seven thunders utter their voices to that group is connected to that land of the Holy Spirit. Not a land of word, word only, but word and spirit together. Mechanics and dynamics together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come out of the conditions you've been in. And maybe for the last year you've been in a condition. Maybe for the last month you've been in a condition. Maybe for the last week you've been in a condition. Maybe for the last 10 years you've been in a condition. This is a call this morning to come out of your condition. Hallelujah. And when you start to move out of your condition, you'll pull your family with you. You'll pull your connected ones with you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You got to make the move. You got to start to move. Don't stay in the position you're in. You got to start to move out of your condition. Hallelujah. In other words, pick up your bed and walk. Oh, hallelujah. I know you've been crippled for a long time. But the word this morning is saying, pick up your bed and walk. Can the church say amen? Remember the promise. You shall receive power from on high. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And that's the great promise. 
And I believe this weekend, even today, somebody could get the Holy Ghost. Somebody could break free. Somebody could break past the sound barrier. The sound barrier of your life. The sound barrier of your depression. The sound barrier of your situation. Somebody who has been struggling with female condition could break past the sound barrier of that condition. Because you cannot enter the land of the Holy Ghost and stay the same way. Once you move into that place, something's got to change. It'll change your cells. It'll change your muscles. It'll change your molecules. It'll change your thinking. It'll change your walk. It'll change your talk. Oh, can the church say amen? Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Oh, hallelujah. And Peter said that the promise, I'm still reading, I'm laying a foundation to the text. The promise was made all down through the testament, old and new. You can find promising on up, on up to that day of the Pentecost and they entered into the promise. In the message, redemption, my power. Brother Branham said, and that's what God has did today. He gives every one of you that wants it, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But you got to go in and possess it. That's all. Fight out the differences. You see where contending for the faith comes in? Fight out the differences. Tear down the walls. And get started in there and get it. So there's a tearing down of walls. That's part of our responsibility. Tearing down the walls of division. Tearing down the walls of separation. Tearing down the walls of problem. Not building up walls, but tearing down walls. Not building up division, but tearing down division. Not saying this group and that group, but saying his group. Oh, you don't hear me this morning. Not this group, that group. It's his group. It's one body. It's one Lord. It's one faith. It's one baptism. It's one Holy Ghost. It's one promise. It's one prophet. It's one highway to heaven. It's one heaven. It's one earth. And we shall reign on this earth. And there'll be no separation. There'll be no walls. There'll be no division. It won't be those in this inspiration over here and those in that doctrine over here. We shall reign on the earth. Can the church say amen? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Possess it. Fight out the differences. Tear down the walls and get started in there and get it. You say, pastor said it's not for us today. Just walk right on past that. That's the prophet talking. Mother said, I'll run you away from home if you believe this. Go right on past it. Husband said, I'll leave you. Go right on past it. That's all. Got to go and possess it. That's all. Divine healing is for every one of you. I'm reading the prophet's words. Every one of you sitting here tonight with cancer, heart trouble, whatever is, God has given you the promise and it's yours, but you have to go and possess it. So is there anybody in the house this morning that want to possess their healing, possess their family, possess their victory, possess their health, possess their joy? Maybe you lost your joy. Maybe you lost your peace. Maybe you lost your victory. Maybe you lost your shout somewhere. Somehow you find your shout just disappeared. But today you come back to possess it. You come back to take it back and say, I'm going to shout. I'm going to sing. I'm going to worship. I'm going to believe God for the impossible. Might know my child might seem as if impossible, but I'm going to believe God for the impossible. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise, somebody. Give him worship. Oh, I'm not going to be too long with you. But I believe that before we leave this service, we're going to give God a shout because we know who we are. We know whose we are. We know where we come from. We know where we're going. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, just, I'm still reading, but you say, well, I just don't feel just very good. That has nothing to do with it. The promise is yours. God give it to you. Just go right in and slay Philistines. From one side to the other. Anybody in a Philistine slaying mood? From one side to the other. You come to service this morning with your sword drawn. Yeah, leave your sword downstairs. Yeah, leave your sword at home. You're walking with your sword. 
every day you have your sword. He said, listen, go right in and slay Philistine. You don't need to ask permission, can I kill this devil? You don't need to ask permission, can I kill this demon of sickness? No, 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 no. You have permission and authority this morning to slay Philistines. And the prophet said, from one side to the other. So if you're on this side, I'm taking you out. If you're on the other side, I'm taking you out. But we slaying devils this morning. No praise devils. Carnal devils. Devils of depression. Devils of sickness. Devils of backsliding. Devils of the world. Devils in your mind. Devils in your body. We slaying Philistines. We putting them on notice. We are out for war. We have been quiet for a long time. We've been feasting on the word for a long time. We have been in the barracks training for a long time. But we didn't join the army just to train. The training is for us to fight. And fighting time has come. Fighting time has come. Get your swords. Get your plowsheds. Get your weapons of destruction. Get your grenade, get your rocket launcher, get your knife, your spoon, your fork, like shamga, whatever you have. If it's just an ox goad, we serve the devil notice. We are warriors of the faith. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. If I could just get a little more in the monitor. Hallelujah. He said, just go right in. So don't knock on the door and say, devil, come with you. No, open the door. There's a demon in your house, kill it. There's a demon in your life, kill it. There's a demon there, kill it. Slay, don't ask question. It has no funeral service. No, it has no last right. Just kill it and keep on walking. Lying, killing it. Lust, we killing it. Lying and demons and gossip, we killing it. This day, the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. We killing it before the convention. We killing it before this weekend. Hallelujah. I don't want anything holding me back from my blessing. I want to come from the first service and the Holy Ghost packs me out. And then I get refilled in the second service. Refilled in the third service. Every service. Seven services. Walking around the walls of Jericho. To tear the walls down. The walls in Trinidad will come down. Hallelujah. 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 Oh my. He said, slay Philistines from one side to the other and take out all the Hivites. So not just the Philistines. I don't know who are the Hivites, but we're killing them. And he goes on, and the Amorites. So all the ites. All the ites, brother, brother Joe. Whatever holding you back, whatever keeping you down, whatever holding you back, whatever keeping you down, that's the enemy. Call it what you want. Whatever holding you back, whatever trying to keep you down, get your blood pressure high, get your stress out of whack, you don't know where you're standing, whatever you want to call it. We want to identify this morning as a Hittite, a Amorite, a Jebusite, a Philistine, and we coming to kill it this morning. You may be seated. I'm still in a foundation to get to the text. And I promise you, I said I'm not going to be long, but ride with me. But the Branham goes on in the same message. He said, go on, take it. God said, it is yours, go get it. This is, these are instructions. This is a warrior week, you know. This is, this is it, you know. We don't know after this is the rapture, you know. So if it's ever a time to get your son, it's now, you know. Ever time to get your wife is now. Ever time to get in order, it's now. Ever time to clean up your life is now. Woo! Demons on the run, you know. Demons trembling, you know. Hallelujah. Some say they wish they didn't come this morning to the service, you know. Because they thought it was just an ordinary service. Hallelujah. Them demons, spirits, and powers that sometimes attach themselves to you. And they survive all these years. But this morning we're turning up the heat. We're making the place seven times hotter. We're not bothered by the fire. 
we want it hotter because only under pressure only what is of God will last in the pressure oh you don't hear me this morning Friends, it's not difficult to manage things when things are easy and normal. And you know. The hallmark of a great leader, of a great manager, of a great mother, of a great father is when you're under pressure. When you're under fire. When you're under stress. Because that's the only time the real you that show up. When you have money in the bank account, you can buy what you want. The real you are showing up, you know. But you see when the money run out? Then the real you will make himself known. When they get caught in a mistake or a situation, and they didn't expect to get caught, but now you're caught and they're back against the wall. And they have to answer, and, and, and the real you start a man lie and say, well, it wasn't me, I didn't. If the pressure wasn't created, they wouldn't expose what's there. So life is designed in a way to increase the pressure because what is transferable is only your character. The measure of who you are, not this, this 16 elements, but the real you has to be tried in the fire. Walk through the test. Walk through the trial and say, though he slay me, yet still I trust him. Though the skin worms destroyed his body, I'm not going to change for anybody. I have no food on my table. No, but my testimony, I'm not going to compromise my testimony for anybody. Not for family, not for friends, not even for popularity, not just to be an iconoclast or to be different, but I understand where I come from and where I'm going. And that can only come when you have a true revelation of who you are and who called you. Because that speaks of a vertical relationship between you and God. Not you and the church, not you and your husband, wife, children, anybody else, but you answering to God, Lord, here I am, send me. Because God wants to say unto you, as my father sent me, so send I you. And that character in you must look like Jesus. Anybody in the house this morning? I'm almost getting to my text. Could you take some more? How, how are we doing this morning? That was a rhetorical question. Eh? If you could take some more. I remember when I was very, very young, my grandmother had given me some food. And she said, you want some more? And it was not like they kind of want more, like you could have an option. You had to eat it. <laughs> she just sit down there and finish eating the food. You know, now young children and young people have choice. I want that. I know what I know it was. You, you want the rest to put it in a plate. Eat it. Because you ain't know how that reach here. You ain't know the work and the struggle and there's the no choice. Uh, well, I have feeling no, no, no. Eat it. You, you ready for more? Take, take some more. Because the sacrifice that went into putting it there, they want to hear, well, I don't really like it, so, you know. But now people too spoil. They don't understand the sacrifice. I saw a video recently, somebody, he asked, he asked his son in his kid, go and look outside and look at the tree and see if you see money growing on it. Because you don't seem to understand the effort and the sacrifice to provide for the house that you feel you have a right to say certain things and do certain things. It's a balance, but, but the children today are different from 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago. It's a level of ungratefulness and entitlement. I saw a video some time ago of a young lady who I try to understand if it's real or not because I trying to because to me it sounds so mental. And she said she wants to sue her parents, but a punch, for bringing her into the world 
because she never asked to be here. So I'm trying to, you know, they always say the maths that maths in right, George. I'm trying to understand at what point was the parents supposed to consult her about conceiving her? At what, where was this supposed to? So when you say, when you hear the prophecy, the world is becoming totally insane. You don't have to look too far to see that, you know. When children want to sue their parents for disciplining them, and when you dig deeper, the discipline is to bring you into subjection and into character and to avoid mistakes and failure. But rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft locked up in the heart of man. You know that if I say rebellion is a sin of witchcraft? Rebelling against parents, rebelling against order, rebelling against... But this is how I am and... and The devil has twisted mind and you see it through technology, through all these things to zap you, to distract you from God. Because they have smaller gods, lower class Gs, and we'll get to it in the scripture. We choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Not in my house. Not in my house, not in my house, not in my house, not in my house. Hallelujah. We need Christians who will take a stand. You realize how much people are taking a stand for all kinds of things now? People taking stand for what they believe. They taking stand for their conviction. This is how it's supposed to be. And we want our rights and we want this in them. Show me some Christians who are fighting for their conviction. Huh? Fighting for the right to be holy. The right to be pure. The right to say, I'm a Christian. I don't need to dress like the world. I don't need to conform like the world. I don't need to drink like the world. I don't need to smoke like the world. I don't need to put on makeup like the world. I don't need to be worldly. Because I know who I am and whose I am. Can the church say amen? In the same message, redemption, my power. But he didn't say, now I'll go in and sweep it all out and build you up some nice city and set you down on easy street. He doesn't do it that way. So the prophet is saying, God don't come and make up your bed in the morning, you know. You wake up in the morning, Lord, when I get up, let the waves be washed. No, it doesn't work like that. He said he doesn't go and sweep it all out and build you up some nice seat and set you down easy, easy street. He doesn't do it that way. He gives it to you and you got something to do. So fathers, you have something to do. Mothers, you have something to do. Young people, you have something to do. Elders, you have something to do. Deacons, you have something to do. And everybody, soldiers, you have something to do. It's a duty it's a responsibility. It's a responsibility and it's a duty. You're not a soldier today, well, tomorrow I'm not really reporting it. No, you're a soldier all the time. Even when you're not in uniform, you're still on duty. You're just undercover. It's either you're in uniform or you're undercover, but you're still a soldier. You're still under orders. You're still under training. Can the church say amen? He's good enough to give you land. And, he's, and he'd help you and be with you, but go take it. And if you are sick tonight, crippled, blind, deaf, dumb, whatever you are, go take it. God said it was yours. It's your possession. God give it to you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'll skip some of this because this is familiar territory to you and I really want to get to something to make sure it's in before we close out today's service. And when you read Joshua 1, we read it, let me just get it here quickly. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua. The son of Nun, Moses, minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. 
Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the lands of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going on of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, and that's the same scripture that applies to us, you know. This law, this message, this promise that we have, we are not supposed to depart from it from the left or to the right. And we are supposed to have courage to stand, to possess it, and every place you put your foot, that land is going to be your land. Can the church say amen? So let me get to my text. We read from Joshua 24. And I just want to read the two verses again and then get back to the background for context. So Joshua is speaking now. Now chapter 24 of Joshua is the last chapter of the book of Joshua. This is Joshua's going away message. This is after many battles and victories. Many struggles, much pain. I'll rewind. I'll just go to Joshua 24 and verse 1. If you have your Bibles, you could just run through it with me as we build up to those verses that we read to start. Joshua 24 and verse 1. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and they presented themselves before God. And I preached on part of this some time ago and I have some notes written here that when you look at Bible characters in history, many of them have different attributes. But in the case of Joshua, we never picture Joshua as the man to stand up on a Sunday and give a sermon. We knew Joshua as what? A warrior, a fighter. Are you for us or against us? There are not much opportunities of speeches you will see through scriptures with Joshua. He was more of a boots on the ground type, a soldier, a leader who knew how to run an operation. He's a tactical commander. He was a general whose war stories were told and retold. But as his life started to wind down, this man of action turned into a sort of spiritual guide. Maybe it was his understanding of the people or his uneasy hunch about what could happen when he was no longer around to lead them because he knew he was about to go. Or the simple fact that those he had shared in the glory days of the Canaanite camp were fading away just like he was. Now Joshua was an older man. He must have known that as he and his comrades left this world, the memories of God's wonders may slowly fade, replaced by the everyday noise of life and the influence of the Canaanites around them. And the easy pull of the world, young people, would start them down a slippery slope away from God. And there Joshua stood calling for the people. On the edge, looking back, I could imagine on a life well lived, his purpose fulfilled. God had given him a job to do, and he did it. When Moses passed on, Joshua had picked up the torch, bravely stepping up to God's challenge. The book of Joshua, his life's testament, was proof of his faithfulness. As he faced his own mortality, he was secure in the knowledge that he had made the right choice to serve the Lord. His journey was over, but his legacy would live on. 
His only wish, his only desire, his only prayer was for the people to stay true to the path that they had set out on together. And he wanted to remind them, to encourage them, to push them to keep on going. And that's what I'm doing this morning, trying to remind you, to encourage you, to push you to keep going. The last three chapters of Joshua gives us a glimpse of his role. In chapter 22, it was a farewell speech to the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh as they were about to set off across Jordan. He brought up the past and urged them to stick to the rules set by Moses. In chapter 23, it's a call to action to the future leaders. And you can read it. The people who would take over after he was gone. It echoed the sentiments of his earlier sermon, but with extra wisdom for those who would take up the mantle of leadership. And finally, in this chapter 24, Joshua would give one last sermon, one last encouragement, one last message to the entire assembly at Shechem. Not long before he would breathe his last breath, Joshua, the soldier turned preacher, still leading his people right to the very end. He stood and he brought the people to Shechem. And Shechem is interesting. It's more than a dot in a map. It's a place of decision, a place of destiny. It was a place that held special meaning. And the backdrop of one of the most important, some of the most important events in scripture. Like a crossroad in a novel where characters come to find their purpose. Joshua brought the people to a special place. If we go back in Genesis, Shechem was the place when Abraham would become Abraham. God shows up and made a promise and Abraham builds an altar. So Shechem, the promise was laid from Abraham to Abraham. When Joseph was sold into slavery, it was at Shechem. And the amazing thing is that even though Joseph ends up in prison, and he told them to, when you're going back, you remember he said, carry my bones with you? Joseph was buried at Shechem. So Joshua had gathered the people at a place of great spiritual significance. And had come full circle to begin to give his last address. Can the church say amen? Joshua 24 and verse 2. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even terror. The father of Abraham and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And I sent Moses also and Aaron and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them and afterward I brought you out. In other words, God is speaking to Joshua to show them what I've taken you through. In other words, you have a reason to be happy. You have a reason to rejoice because I've been taking you through some stuff for your whole life. And verse 16, I brought your fathers out of Egypt and ye came unto the sea and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And he dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of Jordan. And they fought with you. And I gave them into your hand that he might possess their land. And I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. You see how much stuff they went through? But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you still. So I delivered you out of his hand. 
And he went over Jordan and came unto Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you. The Amorites and the Parasites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Girgashites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword. It wasn't your strength. It wasn't your ability, nor with thy bow. Can I get some more on the monitors, please? And I, gave you, I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not. And ye dwell in them, and of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not do you eat. Now after all of that, Joshua challenges the people. Know therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, he will serve the Lord. Now I want us to look at this closely, friends. This choice being presented to the people was not a choice between serve God or serve the devil. I want to look at his choice a little closely. He said, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the new gods of the Amorites. In other words, Joshua was challenging the people to see if they really want God. And the challenge is to the church and to the young people, do you really want God? In other words, you could go back to your back sitting ways in sin if you want that. Or you could even serve the new gods, which is having a form of godliness. So people have given up the old gods. They're not smoking, they're not drinking, they're not in the world, but they're in church serving new gods. Joshua was testing them. And this is the challenge I'm presenting to you, church. You're scared long. You're not serving the old God, but in your heart, there's a new God. So you have a choice this morning. Joshua threw it out. He wants to know who really is serious. Let me read it one more time. He said, now therefore, fear the Lord. Because that's a problem. People don't have fear for the Lord. Because fear brings respects. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So he said, fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity. And in truth. If you know better, do better. If you know better, live better. If you know better, act better. Serve him in sincerity. And in truth, and put away the gods, put away the styles, put away the fashions, put away the cigarette, put away the lying, put away the fornication, put away the adultery, put away the pornography, put away the filthy living, put away the worldly music, put it away. He said, Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt. In other words, in Egypt, they were backslidden in Egypt, brother George. He said, your father served gods when they were in Egypt on the other side of the flood. Put them away and serve the Lord. And he said to them now in verse 15, I want you to dial it in now. Eh? Because this is the problem in the message. And if it seem evil unto you, you have a problem with serving the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your father served, who were just telling to put away, or these new gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell, these gods of social media, these gods of Christian music that are not really Christian. 
these gods of associations that is not that they're wearing earrings and makeup and pants, but it is in their heart. They're really going to hell still. It's a new form of God, but it's still not the true God. And Joshua declares publicly, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So what Joshua did, he presented three options. The gods of your past. So when people backslide, they already backslide into the gods of the past. Or these new gods that take up your time because watching a set of movies on Netflix, watching a set of TV, well, I'm not in the world, I'm not drinking, I'm not smoking, I'm not fornicating, but this is a, a new god of the land in who you dwell, but you're still not giving the attention to God. So where you really want to be at this morning, you want to go back from where you came in the world, you want to play games in church, or you want to leave it all behind and serve the Lord. It's a thought-provoking situation, you know. Because many will miss it. Not because they were living in the world. No, they left that. But these new gods are the new problem. The gods that take up your time to your car pray. You know you're supposed to pray. You left the world where you didn't pray. But now you're in church and you're supposed to be praying. But you're not praying because you're serving new gods. Anybody with me? On the outside, you know you're not looking like the world, but on the inside, it's worldly music, worldly desires, worldly affections, worldly operation. That's why the Bible says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power. I hope this helps somebody, you know. Because God is not going to help you and bless you if you don't make a choice. God is not choosing for you. So Joshua is saying, it's your choice. Choose you today who you will serve. You left the world to come in a message, but you still have the world in you. And the reality is, Brother Clarence, Satan is smart. He knows he can present a cigarette to you. He knows he can present a, a alcohol to you. But he will find new gods. Unlimited new gods, Brother Punch. He present this, this, this distraction, this thing. And, and all it doing is taking away your focus. From as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Where are you standing this morning? In the message, choosing of a bride. But the Banham said, in many things of life, we are given a choice. The way of life itself is a choice. We have a right to make our own way, choose our way that we want to live. And the product of your life is a choice. And you can't blame anybody about it. Education is a choice. I always say people go to school for five years and leave with nothing. Who's to blame? And for everybody who have an excuse, I can show you somebody who had it worse, who because they chose to do it, did it. So I can't accept excuses. Somebody wrote a book, the book of excuses, you know. And they have almost every possible excuse in that book, you know. But you know, God has no excuses. He accepts no excuses. When Moses stood and said, I can't talk, I can't write, I can't email, I can't text, I can't... He said, when you're done, let me know when you finish. Because you're still going. Because for everything you say, you can't do and you can't do and you can't do. When you finish, write it all down. Burn it afterwards because you're still going. You still have to live like a Christian after all is said and done. It's a choice. You have to choose to be a Christian. You have to choose to dress like a Christian, live like a Christian, act like a Christian. Forgiveness is a choice. Love is a choice. Worship is a choice. Prayer is a choice. This is Brother Branham. We can choose whether we're going to be educated or whether we are not going to be educated. That's a choice we have. That's the prophet's words. Eh? Right and wrong is a choice. 
Every man, every woman, boy and girl has to choose whether they're going to try to live right or not live right. It's a choice. But the Bible goes on. Your eternal destination is a choice. And maybe tonight, today, some of you will make that choice of where you'll spend eternity before the service ends tonight. There'll be one time that if you turn God down many times, there'll be one time you'll turn him down the last time. There's a line between mercy and judgment and it's a dangerous thing for a man or a woman, boy or girl, to step across that line. For there's no return when you step across that deadline. So today, tonight, it may be the time that many will make their decision where they will spend the endless eternity. Friends, it's a choice. You can choose to save or you can choose to spend. It's your choice. You can choose to lead or you can choose to follow. You can choose to teach or you can choose to learn. You could choose to create or you could choose to consume. You could choose to give or you could just choose to receive. You could choose to forgive or you could choose to hold a grudge. It's your choice. No much service. You talk about drop your arts, drop your arts, drop your arts. People choose to renew it. They're renewing arts and grudges that they can't remember why they have the arts and the grudge. They can't remember why they can't talk to somebody. But it's a choice. You could choose to take risk or to stay safe. You could choose to embrace change or to remain static. You could choose to listen or to ignore. You could choose to be proactive or reactive. You could choose to ask for help. Or you could choose to struggle alone. You could choose to share or you could choose to keep things to yourself. You could choose to work or you could choose to stay home and be lazy. It's a choice. You could choose to accept responsibility or deny responsibility. You could choose to trust or doubt. You could choose to compliment or criticize. But the Bible says if you have nothing good to say, stay quiet, man. Say something nice, say something kind. But no, some people, they can't do that. And they make a choice to say whatever comes to their mind. You could choose to be optimistic or you could choose to be pessimistic. Listen, nobody has the switch to control that in you, you know. It's your choice. So you cannot say it's because so and so happened. It's why I saw this morning. It is still your choice. It is still your choice. You could choose to admit mistakes and say I was wrong, I'm sorry, or you could deny them. Or justify them, which is what most of us do. We don't want to ab- admit we're wrong. We have a reason. Well, I hear you, you know, but the reason why I did it so is because of so. And you're, you're not willing to, because you can't grow and change if you're not willing to admit that I made a, a messed up. I consider myself an epic failure. And I'm not negative or pessimistic about it. But failure is a part of life. Every day I'm failing. Every day I'm making a mistake. But God's grace keep picking me up. His grace keep picking me up. His grace keep picking me up. And if you approach life, because in this human journey is a life full of stumbling. When a child falls along trying to learn to walk, he do get I really depressed. Yes, I fall along. For two days here, I try to walk again. Curl up on the bed because he fall along. No. He just get back up and fall on again, get back up and fall on again until after a while he gets his balance better and then walk, start to turn to thing and then you can't even catch them. You're trying to keep up with them because they now went from that to walking to running to running away. But they have dealt with failure. And we sing the song, we fall down but we get up. So how hard is it to say, you know what, I made a mistake and I want to repent. I want to make things right. I don't want to go back into that mistake again. That's what Brother Branham said. When a, a, a pig falls in the mud, he said, but wait now, it's a long time I feel this mud, boy. We, I, forget, I forget how this mud is a feeling now. But when a, when a lamb falls in the mud, he's had a cry. 
Because you don't want to be in that condition. So the issue is not falling down. People fall down and when they feel the mud, so they say, nah, boy, wait. Whew. But if you fall in the mud and you recognize this is not for me, then your heart saying, pray for me, encourage me. Somebody pull me, somebody hold me. I'm fighting back. I try my best. I don't want to say it. That's a choice. You can choose to take responsibilities. And many, many fathers have to take responsibilities. Take responsibility. Many mothers have to accept responsibility. Children have to take responsibility. Because if you can't admit you could do better, something wrong with you. Because we could all do better. Could we do more for the Lord? Could we do more for each other? If the answer is yes, then what's holding us back? It's a choice. It's because we choose to do other things that don't create value in the economy of God. Can the church say amen? You could choose to be unkind or unkind. But the man taught us this. You could choose to fight or flee. You could choose to be patient or impatient. You could choose to encourage or discourage. You could choose to heal. You know, you could give words to somebody that will create healing. Or you could choose to hurt somebody. You could choose to build up or you could choose to tear down. You could choose to live for today or plan for tomorrow. What did the prophet teach us? Live as if God is coming now, but plan for 20 years. You could choose to show gratitude or ingratitude. Half of the people who complaining, they didn't even thank God for waking them up this morning. And the Bible says, in everything, give him thanks. That's a choice to be grateful. Lord, I thank you. It's just a hundred dollars I have, but I thank you for giving me the hundred dollars. I'm so thankful. Now guide me on how to use it. Your whole perspective on life changes. It's a choice. Because the moment you complain, but the bad I'm told us complaining weakens your faith. I know this is not the kind of shout for joy thing, but you know why I'm teaching this? Because this weekend it's a choice. You get what you expect out of this weekend. And you have a choice with the effort, the prayer, the sacrifice that you make towards this convention. It's a choice to be honest or dishonest. Do you really want to serve God? Do you really want to have a testimony? Do you really believe this message? Do you really believe this scripture? Do you really believe that you're supposed to cover your knee? Do you believe, sister, that you're not supposed to cut your hair? Do you believe in not supposed to be listening to worldly music? Are you being honest with yourself? Are you being real with yourself because it's a choice? And if your behavior is something else, then it means you're really not being honest. Come to church, say amen. It's your choice to love or to hate. It's your choice to be present in the house of the Lord or to be absent. It's your choice. People do what they want to do. It's your choice to be mentored, to take advice, to take encouragement. Or to do your own thing. It is your choice to persevere or to quit. It is your choice to be selfish or selfless. And as we heard by the Olu preach months ago, it is your choice to live in the gain or live in the gap. It is your jo choice to live in negativity or to say, you know what, I'm going to be positive. Can the church say amen? amen? Abraham chose to obey God's command to leave his homeland and to travel to an unknown place. Noah chose to build an ark in obedience to God's instructions despite the mocking of everybody around him. Moses chose to identify with the Hebrews rather than enjoy the comforts of Pharaoh's palace. Joshua made a decision to serve God, stating as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Caleb trusted in God's promise and encouraged the Israelites to conquer the land of Canaan despite the giants. Ruth, she made a choice to stay with her mother-in-law, Naomi, after her husband died, even when it would have been easier to return to her own people. David decided to spare King Saul's life twice, even though Saul was trying to kill him. David could have killed Saul, but he spared him. Not once, twice, and he knew he was out to get him. That was David's choice. Jonathan chose to befriend David and protected him from Saul, despite the risk on his own life. 
Solomon made a choice to choose wisdom when God said, take whatever you want. Whatever you want, I give it to you. And what was Solomon's choice? He chose wisdom. And God blessed him with wealth beyond his measure. What do you choose this morning? Elijah chose to confront the prophets of Baal alone, trusting God to answer by fire. It was his choice. Elisha chose to follow Elijah and serve him, leaving his life behind him. It was a choice. Nehemiah chose to return to Jerusalem to lead the rebuilding of the city walls, despite being in a comfortable position in Persia. The Hebrew boys, they chose to walk into the fiery furnace because they didn't want to bow down. Whom do you want to choose this morning? Esther risked it all and chose to risk her life and say, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to see the king. Daniel, he made a choice to not defile himself with the king's food and wine, choosing to honor God's laws. That was his choice. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mary, she made a choice. She said, be it unto me according to thy word. When the angel Gabriel came to her, that was her choice. What is your choice? Peter chose to follow Jesus when he was called, leaving his fishing nets and his fishing business behind him. That was his choice. What is your choice? That Samaritan woman, she chose to believe Jesus. And then she chose to tell everybody, come see a man. <laughs> Can the church say amen? Paul decided to follow Jesus after encountering him on the road to Damascus. Can the church say amen? Young people, what is your choice? Church, what is your choice? Choose you this day whom you will serve. And not all choices in scripture are good choices. Cain made a choice to kill his brother. Lot's wife, we have preached this many times. It was a choice. She wasn't forced. Nobody put a gun to her head and said, look back. She chose to look back when she was instructed to whatever you do don't look back but she made a choice oh god help us pharaoh made a choice to harden his heart Achan, after the battle of jericho we preached about that before he made a choice Talk to them, do not touch anything. Leave the worldly styles, leave the worldly goods, leave the worldly dresses, leave the worldly makeup, leave it all behind call it your cursed things. Achan made a choice to bring gold from Jericho into his tent and cost lives as they lost a battle against I. It was a choice. Samson was told to not talk about your strength. He made a choice and he lost his eyes. Saul was told to kill all the Amalekites but he chose to spare King Agag and the best of the livestock. Can the church say amen? amen? Ahab made a choice to marry Jezebel and worship Baal and lead Israel into idolatry. True scripture, but the George's choices, you know. You could choose to be healthy or you could choose to be unhealthy. You could choose to be sad, you could choose to be happy. You could choose to be a warrior or you could choose to be a warrior. It's your choice. Judas Iscariot made a choice, Brother Clarence, to betray Jesus. Nobody forced him. I want to get this. None of the character you read who did positive or negative, anybody forced them. It was their choice. Ananias and Sapphira, you know they volunteered? Nobody tell them, go and do what they did or no. They offered to do it. It was their choice. <laughs> And then they chose to lie in front of Peter. It was their choice. They didn't have to lie. Pilate had a choice. He could have given it to the crowd's demand. Give us Barabbas, give us Jesus, give us Barabbas. And he made a choice. The rich young ruler, he made a choice. You know what it is to be able to meet Jesus and talk to Jesus <laughs> and have a conversation with Jesus? The musician could begin to get ready. I'm not going to be too much longer. And the rich young ruler, Brother Blackman, had the opportunity to walk up to Jesus and have a conversation with Jesus. 
And he asked the question, Good master, what, what, what must I do to get it? What, 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 what lack I yet? I followed all the commandments. I've done everything to my youth. And he had to be in his great fantastic case. And Jesus looked past his words, past his face, past what he was wearing, looked into his heart, and he gave him a choice. He didn't give him a gift. He gave him a choice. He said, go sell all you have and give it away. And that young man left sad. And Jesus looked at him sorrowful. And he gave him a choice. And he was unable to make the right choice. Esau gave up his birthright for a plate of food. That was his choice. In a message by Faith Moses, Brother Manam said, When I see a woman coming down the street with a long skirt and her hair done up neatly and a decent looking dress on, and I see another young lady, maybe the same age, with a little pair of shorts on, she may be in looks twice as pretty as a woman with a long hair, according to the looking of the world. But I'll take my side with a girl that's just like a Christian. Though they will be laughing at her and calling her a fanatic, yet I'll take my side. She may not be as pretty as the other girl featurely, but she sees something. By faith, she sees him who is invisible, who is guiding her life. When I see a man on the job being called deacon or preacher or a fanatic because he refuses to smoke, and to drink beer, and to go to the dances like the rest of them, and he's called a fanatic, my heart goes out for him. He is my brother down in this Egypt soil that makes our heart long to embrace and say, brothers, we are pilgrims and strangers of this land, and I long to fellowship with you. Moses had to make a choice, choosing by faith. How many young men would have jumped at the opportunity to be the son of Pharaoh's daughter? How many young men would have jumped at the opportunity that Moses had to enjoy all the pleasures and the glamour of the world to become the king of Egypt? To have the whole world at his feet? What a foolish thing that the young men of his day must have taught when Moses chose to take his place with the afflicted and the suffering people of God. Why did he do it? By faith, when he lifted up his eyes, he looked beyond the glamour of this world. He looked beyond the pleasures of sin. And the Bible said he endured a seeing him who was invisible by faith. He made a choice to serve that God regardless of what took place. But Abraham says, it has not changed. Many of us could go to what we would call a better building. We could enjoy maybe the fellowship and pleasure of sitting in a better pew. We might be more popular to drink and to smoke and to dress and to act like the world. But what's the matter? You have lifted up your eyes and by faith you see him who is invisible. And you took your stand with the rejected and so-called holy rollers of the day. For by faith we see him who is invisible choosing to suffer the persecutions and the afflicted. I wouldn't say to people that they should choose to be afflicted. I don't say that you should choose suffering. It would not be the human thing to do. But if suffering lays in the path of duty, then let's take it as it comes. I don't want you to do something for somebody to make fun of you. I wouldn't want you to say different things. I belong to a church that doesn't believe in so and so and things like that. I wouldn't say for you to get out here and carry on and do something that was radical. I wouldn't want you to do that so that somebody would say that you are fanatic. You bring that on yourself. But if it lays in the path of your duty towards God, let the world say what they want to say. You live on. You make a choice. Every man and woman has to make this. What if Pharaoh could have saw what Moses saw? He saw the sufferings of the people. He knew what the price was to pay. But by faith he chose it rather than to have the pleasures of sin. 
There's maybe a little young lady sitting here as glamorous young woman. The world would like to say to you, do thus and thus. You are beautiful. Your body is pretty shaped. You should show that. But my sister, raise up your eyes and look beyond that to him and said it's an abomination for a woman to put on a garment that pertains to a man. If the men and the people in your community... If the women that you associate with said cut that long hair off, it would be cooler. I'm reading the prophet's words. It would be this, that, or the other, or it would be better. Don't you listen to that. You lift up your eyes and by faith saw him that said the woman's hair is her glory and she shall not cut it. If they say it will be popular, you will stand in better with your job or with your boss. If you take a sociable drink or if you would smoke cigarettes like the rest of the women or you would stand in more sociable in your neighborhood, by faith raise your eyes. Look to him who said, defile this body and I will destroy it. By faith we believe those things. It's nothing that you've seen, it's something you believe by faith. And in this faith walk, there comes a time when there has to be a choice. Everybody still with me? I'm almost finished. I want to drive this home, friends, because if you want to get the Holy Ghost and you want your breakthrough, it is very much, I read the quote, your eternal destination is a choice. Choose you today, young brother, young sister, who you will serve. Lot made that sad mistake that we make. A lot of times we choose for our own good. We choose things that would be better. And I've preached this before. Because Lot, the Bible said, righteous Lot was vexed in his spirit in the book of Peter. With the abomination in Lot. He was strong enough to withstand the environment. But his wife wasn't strong enough. His children were not strong enough. And the decision, the choice he made was not just impacting his own life. It destroyed his family. So the choice you make is not just about you, friends. There are others who are depending on you making the right choice. And that's why I challenge the fathers, challenge the mothers, challenge the leaders. They are second order consequences of the choices you make. That's why Joshua could stand and say, as for me and my house, I am taking responsibility, not just for me, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In the message, choosing of a bride, and many times men and women hear God's truth and see it vindicated and proven truth, but yet they don't want to hear it. In other words, they don't really want to hear it. There's some other reason. There's some other choosing that they have than to face up to truth and facts. Therefore, their ears can be closed to the gospel. They'll never hear it again. My advice to you, this is in 1965, my advice to you, when God speaks to your heart, you act right then. But the Branham goes on, Elijah gave them a choice. You remember, just before the fire came, he said, why stand you, halt, why halt you between two decisions? You're, you're one foot in church, your other foot in the world. You're one foot in the old gods, your other foot in the new gods, and you don't have a firm conviction that I want to serve the Lord. And it's embarrassing when parents can't take a stand because the children take the lead off of that. It's either right or it's wrong. If God is God, serve him. With all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all that's in you and God will honor that. He will bless that. He will reward you for it. Elijah gave them a choice. Choose you this day whom you will serve. If God be God, serve him. But if Baal be God, serve him. If the earring and the makeup and the costume and the pornography and the sex and the alcohol and the music and the stuff. If you want, I will go. But if you want God, 
If you want redemption, if you want deliverance, if you want eternal life, if you want to, oh, come on now, somebody help me. If you want the peace that surpasses understanding, Jesus said, my peace I give to you. My love is for you. My reward is for you. My kingdom is for you. Verse 16 of, Ex of, of Joshua 24. And the people answered him. So Joshua presented a choice to them to see, all oh, you really want this message? You really want this gospel? You really want to be a Christian? Choose you this day. The old gods choose where you come from. The Baptist church, the, 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 wherever it was. You want to go back there or you want to live in this Amorite world and adapt to their foolishness? So in verse 16, the people respond. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and, pres and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people whom through we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us. This is the people talking, huh? Even the Amorites which dwelt in the land, therefore will we also serve the Lord for he is our God. So Joshua listens to that response. Because the response sounded good. It's a nice answer. But Joshua wasn't buying it. Words. Or they're talking nice. Or they're talking some quotes and scriptures and it's the Lord who took me through but I really want to get along into your heart. So verse 19, Joshua probes. God give us the probe of the Holy Ghost today. To see what really in your heart. Because you are who you are when you're alone. You are who you are when the elder and the minister. Because they gave an answer because they were in the presence of Joshua. They were in the presence of church. So they were given a nice answer. So he wants to go deeper. And Joshua said to the people... Now, I want you to remember their response. Let me read it one more time. You know. Joshua, they choose you. They respond by saying, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. And they go through this whole thing. It was the Lord who took us through. And, da, da, da. and Joshua said in verse 19, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, strange gods, gods we can't identify. Everybody have a strange God in their house. Sometimes your job is a God, your car is a God, the internet is a God, a movie is a God, a movie star. People following on social media, rappers and R&B singers, strange gods. Who inspires me? Who inspires you? Strange gods. Where you get it from? You're following this one. You're following this one. That one is a hero. New trends. Strange gods. He said, if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he had done you good. So Joshua is probing with the Clarence. If you only really want to have a time this convention, if only you really want to break up the fallow ground, if you really want the windows of heaven to open, he said, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then they will hear from heaven if that's the kind of people that you are. And the people said unto Joshua, verse 21, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. So they come with another testimony by the currents. After they're hearing that, they're saying, we are more committed. Is there anybody committed to serving the Lord? Anybody in the house committed to serving the Lord? Because that means a lot. Eh? That, that means a lot. Hallelujah. If you're really serious. If you're not serious, 
I can't force you to be serious. But if you're really serious about serving the Lord, is there anybody really serious about serving the Lord? Because that is what the question that he was challenging on. If you're really serious about this thing. He said, because if you're not serious, God will kill you. He will judge you. He will strike you down. That's what Joshua is saying to the people. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, knowing what he has done for you, he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he had done you good. Hasn't he done you good? Hasn't he taken you out of the Mary clay? Hasn't he put your foot on a rock to stay? Let's cast away the strange gods. I'll ask the question again. Is there anybody serious about serving the Lord? Because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Don't make that statement lightly now. Don't just say it because it's a thing to say in this service. Because God will hold you to this. We're going to get it in the next verse. God will hold you to this thing now. It's a contract. It's a contract. So if you don't really mean it, check yourself. Check your heart. Check your life. Check your declaration. Do you really want to serve the Lord? Do you really want to be a Christian? Do you really want to give it all up and surrender? Do you really want the Holy Ghost? Do you really want holiness and purity and faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness? Do you really want this and the benefits that come with this? Like your family being set free. If that is what you want, then let him know. Let him know that's what you want. Jesus is on the main line. You can tell him what you want. Joshua wasn't just trying for them to come to an understanding of it. He wanted them to make a declaration. You have to say it. I want this thing. He said, you, you really want to serve the Lord? He said, we will serve the Lord. Verse 21, and the people said unto Joshua, nay, but we will serve the Lord. If you are serious this morning, I want you to lift your hand and say, I will serve the Lord. I want you to say it one more time. I will serve the Lord. Only if you're serious. If you're not serious, you don't need to participate in this thing. If you're not serious, you could go downstairs. If you're not serious, you could leave. But if you're, if you're really, really serious, I want you to make this statement again. I will serve the Lord. I want you to say it one more time. I will serve the Lord. Verse 22, And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves. In other words, you are saying it in the presence of yourselves. You are now holding each other accountable to that statement you just made that I will serve the Lord. Oh God. Don't say it if you don't mean it. But if you say that you really mean it, I will serve the Lord. He said you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen you the Lord to serve him and they said we are witnesses so do we have any witnesses in the house this is a different kind of service now so I'm saying it I am going to serve the Lord and I'm a witness do we have any witnesses in the house you're witnessing for your brother in other words I see but Anthony making a statement I'm his witness he is my witness I'm your witness we are witnesses to each other that we are going to serve the Lord. We are witnesses to each other that we are making a choice to turn back the strange gods, to throw away the filthy garments, to throw away the ways of the flesh, to put under our feet every unclean spirit, every doubt, every unbelief in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are contending for the faith. We are fighting for every inch of ground. We are taken back. This is the first wave of the attack. We will serve the Lord. I'm almost 
almost done. Verse 22. You're going to play something very softly. And Joshua said unto the people, and Joshua, the type of the Holy Ghost, ye are witnesses against yourself. In other words, Brother George, I'm counting on me to help hold me accountable, and I'm going to keep you accountable. We are witnesses against ourselves. Iron sharpening iron. Because we have to make this thing together. And not leaving nobody behind. And not leaving nobody behind. We're taking everybody with us. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Your family has got to come. I'm going to help you, but you got to help me. You got to help the brother next to you. You got to help the sister next to you. But we will serve the Lord. And I'm your witness, and you are my witness. So I'll pray for you. But I need you to pray for me. And I need to pray for your sister. And I need to pray for your brother. Verse 22. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves, that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. And I can declare this morning, I am a witness. Now therefore, in verse 23, put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you. And incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. I want you to catch this here. It's a big point in a small verse. They made a declaration. He said you are witnesses, but he knew that their statement was the first step of the way. That there were still issues in their lives that had to be addressed. So after the statement, and after the fact that they agreed, and after the fact that they had an understanding, he said, no, therefore, let's fix the issues. He said, put away the strange gods which are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve and his voice will we obey. Oh. Verse 25. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem, in that place, in that place where Abraham became Abraham, in that place where Joseph was sold to slavery, in that place where his bones were buried, Joshua stood on that sacred ground and made a covenant with his people. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us. For it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. So Joshua was putting a clause inside the clause. He said, you declared it. We witnessed it. But he said, the stone here also heard it. These benches also heard it. This altar also heard it. Oh God, you don't hear me this morning. This building heard it. And if, if we don't praise God, then the rocks will cry out. If we don't praise God, the benches will cry out. So not only are your brothers and sisters witnesses, but the benches, the stones, this ground, this tabernacle is a witness of your declaration that you will serve the Lord. It will stand as a rebuke to you if you walk away. But to you who are hungry, it will stand as a reminder of the covenant that we made this day. Yeah. 
So Joshua, let the people depart. Every man unto his inheritance. And church, I'm finished. It's time for me to depart. It's time for you to depart unto your individual inheritance. You know the land. We said it at the beginning, it's a land of Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Ghost land. That's your inheritance. So I want to invite you for a few minutes. You want to rededicate your heart? You want to conjugate your life? We are going into the convention. You have made a declaration. You have made a choice. Talk to your God for a few minutes and pray. Pray for your family. Pray for the church. Pray for the pastor. Pray for the ministers. Pray for the backsliders who will come to the convention. Pray for the visitors. Pray for God to do something that we humanly cannot do, that only he can do. In the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, Lord, I've done what you told me to do. Now take complete control of your people. Lord, as they talk to you for a few moments, Lord, may you minister to the heirs of salvation. May you break every chain. May you break every shackle. May you help your people. May you fill your people. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Brother Anthony.
spend a few moments in the presence of God. Lift up your hands. Make an altar where you are. If you want to come to the altar, you can do it. If you want to pray where you are, oh, well, let us pray. Let us call upon the name of our Lord. Let us have men, let us have mercy upon us. Let him answer us. Oh, with fire, answer us, oh God, with your presence. Oh, hallelujah, we make an oath today. We sign a contract today. We make an agreement today to serve our God in the beauty of his holiness, to inquire in his temple that in a time of trouble, he promised to hide us in his pavilion in a secret place. He shall hide us and he shall set us up upon a rock and he shall make thine enemies thy footstool. Oh, somebody pray this morning. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you offer it unto God this morning. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Make a promise this morning. Make a declaration that you will serve him. Make a declaration that you're going to put away all of your childish thing. Oh, put away every hallelujah strange God. Oh, from before you serve you the Lord. Oh, in the beauty of his holiness. Oh, serve God in all your hearts. Serve him in all your might. Serve him in all your strength. Serve him with everything that you have in you. Serve him with your hands. Serve him with your feet. Serve him with your mouth. Let your eyes only see his glory. Let your hands only do his will. Let your mouth only speak his praises. Oh, somebody pray this morning. Oh, this is a serious hour. This is a deadly hour. This is an hour of decision. This is a valiant decision. This is an hour of choice. This is an hour of charge. Oh, somebody gotta pray. Somebody better pray. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Get desperate this morning. Desperate for the Holy Ghost. Desperate for the fire. Desperate for the power. This is the last hour. This is the last time. Oh, come before God. Oh, with a broken heart. Come before God with a contrite spirit. Don't you leave this place until you make a declaration before your God. Woo! Sha! Hallelujah! There's a seriousness in this place. A serious God is looking at you this morning to see what choice you are going to make in his presence. Oh, hallelujah! Keep praying, keep praying. So holy, so holy, all honor, all glory, all your hands to him who sits upon the throne he is so holy I cannot look upon his face he is so holy the fire of the eternal one consumes my being consumes my heart oh John said I fell as one dead in the presence of God oh holler to him who, who sits among the golden candlesticks I heard his voice speak unto me. Oh, hallelujah. Hear what the Spirit of God says unto the churches. Oh, hallelujah. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God, Spirit of God, move in this place. Spirit of God, move upon our hearts. Stir us up this morning unto revival. Stir us up this morning. Oh, unto the desperation, unto the burden. Oh, of doom. Watchman, watchman. What of the night? The evil is coming for this world. Shadows is coming for this world. Judgment is coming for this world. Billions of devils about to be loose to slay the people on the earth. Oh, hallelujah. But the elect, oh, they shall escape. The elect shall escape oh hallelujah god shall help her 
God's coming for you. He's coming to redeem you because you love him and because you will obey his commandment and because you will serve him this day. Choose you this day who you shall serve. Can somebody say amen? Choose you this day who you shall serve. I'm going to serve the Lord. Lift up your hands and say, I'm going to serve my Lord. Lift up your hands and say, I will serve you, Jesus. I will serve you. I will praise you. I will worship you. Lift up your hands right now and begin to declare it. Lift up your hands all over this place and begin to declare it. Say, I will serve you. I will love you. I will praise you. I will do your commandments. I will do your will. I will pray without ceasing until every one of these virtues are living in me till faith is living in me till virtue is living in me till knowledge is living in me till temperance is living in me till patience is living in me till godliness is living in me till brotherly kindness is living in me oh till charity is living in me this morning oh lift up your hands give him a shout of praise oh lift up your hands we're gonna praise him we're gonna thank him oh hallelujah hallelujah oh hallelujah give him a shout of praise let's lift your hands let's begin to praise him begin to thank him oh thank you for his mercy oh hallelujah this is mercy this morning oh our final space of grace oh hallelujah 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 oh yes lord oh yes lord thank you jesus thank you for your voice thank you for speaking to us Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for showing us your way. Oh, we obey thy will. We obey thy word. We obey thy commandment. Oh, hallelujah. We seek only to do your will, oh God. Oh, not my will, but thy will be done. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yet your will be done from henceforth and forevermore. We receive the will of God this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
nation this morning. Oh, hallelujah, 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 commitment. Oh, hallelujah, to prayer, to the word. Oh, hallelujah, one more time. I pledge allegiance. Oh, I servant, Reverend Isaac Oven. Oh, what a message from the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Will you choose this day? We will serve. Oh, my. I want you to know, testify to somebody. Shake someone's hand. Praise God. Tell them I want to be a Christian in my heart. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All the way I'm going all the way Oh, all the way I'm going all the way Oh, sing all the way I'm going all the way
favor and giving my dad Joseph Williams Sr. another year to celebrate his 91st birthday. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Certainly give God thanks for that. Amen. Praise God. 91 years of the grace of God. Amen. With long life, he will satisfy. Amen. Note of praise here. Also from Brother Andy and Sister Victoria Henry. They're giving God thanks. They say, good day, saints. We are giving thanks for God's grace over Alexander. He was hospitalized on Monday, gone, with inflammation in his leg muscles, leaving him unable to walk. But Satan is defeated. He's a defeated liar because my God is the great physician, healer, and deliverer. He was discharged yesterday he's now at home resting totally delivered thank you Jesus can we give God praise this morning amen amen wow praise God so he was hospitalized but God's mercy is still over him amen we thank God for that now we just have one prayer request here from sister Victoria Henry as well she's asking prayer for a Lashona book for a 19 uh, month year old child who has a lung infection and has been in hospital for a year. She's praying that the mercy of God would reach out and deliver her. Amen. So we just want to ask God's prayer and God's mercy for this condition. And we just want, if you have a request as well, feel free to lift it up before the Lord this morning. Amen. And we'll offer a word of prayer for you also. Amen. God sees that hand. God bless you. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, Lord, we thank you, Lord Father. Lord, for praises going up to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you are the God who hears. You're the God that answers prayer, Lord Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that even in our trials, you are there with us, Lord. Lord, throughout the journey of our lives, you've always been with us, Father. Lord, we bring even this condition before you for Lashona Book, for this 19-month-old child, Lord, with the lung infection. We pray that your hand of mercy, O God, would reach her, Lord Father. Wherever she is, in the hospital or wherever, we pray, O oh God, for your hand of mercy, O oh God. By faith, may she be healed, O oh God, Father, through the power of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who took off his stripe on our back for, your, for our healing, dear God. 
hands. Oh, Father, we pray for healing for that condition this morning. May you restore, Lord, Father. Lord, I may you heal and touch by your mighty hand. Lord, you see every hand that was raised here this morning. Lord, you know the needs and conditions of each one, Father. Lord, for healing, for restoration, for situations, maybe not theirs, but someone else standing in a gap for a need of prayer. Oh God, may you touch and move, Lord. May you restore, Lord. May you heal, Lord. May you deliver, oh God, Father. Grant salvation, Lord, and great restoration by your power and your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for your presence this morning that we feel. Lord, we thank you, Lord. For your anointing that was here this morning lord to register father lord the decisions that we have made this morning to serve you lord father with all our hearts minds and souls glory thank you lord for your servant brother isaac Ovid, lord father and the burden he had lord jesus lord to come in here this morning lord and to preach the unsearchable riches of christ lord and to lay out before us oh god father lord a decision that must be made by us lord no one else can make that decision. We've got to make it all, each one of every one of us, Lord, for ourselves, oh God. We are witnesses of each other. So, Father, Lord, we lay ourselves before you now, Lord, and we know, Father, that you are the God that rewards them that diligently seek you, Lord. Father, we promise to seek your Father, to seek your face, to, 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 to stay with the Word, Lord Jesus, to stay with your promises, oh God, Father. Lord, not to go back, Lord, not to serve strange gods, but to serve Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that there's a great reward for them that serve you. There's a great reward for them that diligently seek your Father. Lord, we thank you for your presence that was here, Lord. Lord, to remind us, Lord, to bring us to this realization, Father, of what we are about to embark on, Lord, Father. Lord, we feel that the season is set in now. Lord, in all this coming week, we pray that your Holy Spirit would brood over us, Lord. Lord, and even though we go to our various places and homes, we pray that your spirit would just abide with us, Lord, Father. Lord, and keep us, Lord, ever in your presence, Lord, conscious of your moving, Father. Lord, that we know that we're getting ready for a great omnipotence to break out, a great anointing, Lord, to be released upon your people, Lord, Father, this coming weekend. Lord, will you just set our hearts under expectation for you. Lord, we pray that you continue to have your own way upon your people. And Lord, last but certainly not least, we certainly ask for your blessing upon your servant today, Lord. With the eyes are golden, Father. We thank you for what he poured out here today, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I, 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 we pray that you touch him, O oh God. Heal him and give him strength in his body and his limbs and every fiber of his being, Lord Father. Keep his mind, Lord Jesus. Help him, Lord Father. Lord, his cognitive skills, Lord, everything, Father. Lord, to continue to do your work, Lord, to continue to, 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 to do your bidding, O oh God, Father. Lord, we just lend ourselves as servants of you, Lord, so that you could use us in whatever way that you choose, O oh God, Father. Lord, we'd be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. Thank you for our brother here today. Thank you for his wife, his family. We pray a bless them. Anoint them and specially anoint them, Father. Anoint the ministry, Lord. Anoint the laborers in the house. Lord, the deacons, the elders, the ushers, the technical staff, Lord. And everyone, Lord, all the helps and the governments will be involved in, Lord, the next week or so. Lord, help us and give us strength so that we can meet the task, Lord, and cross that finish line. Lord, that we could be a blessing to somebody else. But that's a purpose you raise us up for. Grant it, almighty God, now. Bless your people now, Father, as we get ready to leave this place, but certainly not from your presence. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Oh, and I, you may have your seat. We'll pray. Time, oh, singing out. 